Number 70. A salt is known to be an alkali metal fluoride. A quick approximate determination of freezing point indicates that 4 grams of the salt dissolved in 100 grams of water produces a solution that freezes at about negative 1.4 degrees Celsius. Assuming ideal solution behavior, what is the formula of the salt? Show your calculations. Okie dokie. All right, so basically we have to find the formula of the appropriate salt here. Now, the only thing we know about this salt is that it is an alkali metal fluoride. So let's just write that out over here. We know that it's an alkali metal, right? Alkali metal. And I guess I should write metal, right? Alkali metal plus a fluoride. Okay. So we can gain some insight as to what's going on here, right? Alkali metals, where are they located on the periodic table? An alkali metal is your group one metals, excluding hydrogen, right? Because hydrogen is a non-metal. We are looking for a metal, but we're in group one. So we are anything between maybe sodium, Na, well, lithium, right? And uh, lithium, sodium, potassium, etc., etc., going all the way down that group. And we know that one of these elements is going to be grouped with a fluoride ion, and that is just an F. Now, we know that alkali metals, all of these guys, their oxidation, uh, oxidation charts are always a plus one, no matter who it is, right? Li plus one, Na plus one, K plus one. And the fluorine that is accompanying it is always a minus one. So when these two elements come together, maybe we can just, you know, make a general um, idea here that maybe we're going to classify our alkali metal as saying M for metal, right? And we know that it's in group one, so it's got to be a plus one charge. So when these come together, M, which is a plus one, comes together with F, which is a minus one. One and one, you could use your crisscrossing to bring those charges down to say, okay, I needed one of the metal and one of the fluorine. But basically, the, the, uh, the formula is going to be something like this, M, F. <laughs> now, we want the specific formula of the salt. It could be LiF, right, if I substitute in the lithium for the metal. Could have been NaF, could be KF, or any other alkali metal that's in group one. But now, how are we going to find out what exact uh, alkali metal are we going to use? Well, maybe that's when we take in all the other pieces of information. We basically are at the end of the road uh, for here. So this is your general formula, but we want the specific one. Well, now they're talking about that... We have a freezing point, right? We're talking about a, s a solution being made. We have four grams of this salt being dissolved in 100 grams of water, right? And we're talking about a freezing point. Now, we're, uh, we have freezing temperatures, right? Solution chemistry. This is talking about a freezing point depression. And the formula for freezing point depression is always this one. Delta TF equals KF times M times I. Now let's start off with the delta TF, right? Delta TF means the change in uh, the freezing temperature. F stands for freezing. So this is the change in the freezing temperature. So let's see. They did say that when we, you know, put the salt into the water, it produced a solution that froze at about negative, well, not about, but, oh, actually, yeah, at about, at about negative 1.4 degrees Celsius. But the idea here is that, well, what's the change, right? Where were we supposed to be in the beginning? The temperature is always going to start off with a pure solvent. And in this case, when you have your salt being dissolved into your liquid media, in this case, it's water, your solute always gets dunked into your solvent. So the salt here is your solute, and the water is acting as the solvent. And the solvent is always the uh, freezing point that you're going to take, pure. And this is one of them that we should memorize. The pure 
um, freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. So maybe we'll say, uh, I guess we'll say it down here, right? Pure H2O, the freezing point of that is zero degrees Celsius. But now it dropped. That's why it's called the freezing point depression, because a solution freezing point is always going to be lowered, not higher than your pure water. But now we want that change, and change means subtraction. Keep in mind that your delta TF should always be a positive value. So all you have to do is just subtract these two in a way in which will get you the positive number. So in this case, I'm going to take my pure water without a solution, that's 0.0, .0 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to subtract it from the solution temperature, which they told me was the negative 1.4. And from there, we can find out what that delta T is. So the delta T here would be 1.4 degrees Celsius. So we know this number, 1.4 degrees Celsius. Now the KF is also solvent uh, predominant. So a KF value will only be taken from a solvent. And in this case, just like we said, the solvent is H2O. However, in this question, they did not tell you what the KF value of H2O is. So this is something that either maybe your teacher or professor would give it give to you on your test or quiz, or um, maybe you have to memorize it. The KF of water is this. So maybe I'll put this a little bit, I'll put this right over here. So the KF of water is always 1.86 degrees Celsius per molality. Okay, cool. Now let's see, can we solve for M? M, lowercase fancy M, is the molality. And on the bottom here, molality equals moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. Can we find out that value? Well, they did tell me that I had four grams of the salt, but Oh, shucks, I don't have that formula to convert from moles. So I can't find the molality right now. So maybe this is what I'm going to try to solve for. That means that I should have the I value. The I value is the Van't Hoff factor. And the Van't Hoff factor tells me if we have an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. We definitely have an electrolyte here because... If you have a metal with water, chances are it's going to be an electrolyte. And the I value is always about the total number of ions that exist in your uh, solute. So just as we did this before, right, we found out that the metal had a plus one charge. The fluorine is a negative one. And it comes together between M and F. Now, in this case, there's only one M plus one and one F minus one to get an MF uh, general formula. So how many total ions are here? Well, there's an M plus one and an F minus one. There's two total ions. So I know that this I value is a two. So now let's solve for that molality. 1.4, maybe I'll put it over here, 1.4 equals the KF value of 1.86 times the molality times 2. So let's just simplify the right side. 1.4 equals 1.86 times 2. I get 3.72 times X. We know what to do. Divide on both sides by 3.72. 3.72. And let's see what that molality is. 1.4 divided by this number. I get 0. Point, whoop, 0. Point three. 7, 6 as my molality, right? This is what x equals. So now I'm going to use that molality and use the general molality formula because that might be the link between finding out the general formula. And maybe what I'll do is I'll say, okay, not general form, but general formula. So now let's see. Molality equals, and what I'm going to do I'll just take this and put it over here a little bit. Okay. So we just found out the molality, right? 
0.376. But this was the problem last time, where we know that we have 4 grams of the salt, but I don't know how many moles of the solute I have. So probably this is what I'm trying to solve for. Let's see. Can I find out the kilograms of solvent? Well, the solvent we said was water, and we have 100 grams. 100 grams to kilograms, all we have to do is just divide by 1,000. Similarly, you could take the decimal, move it to the left three times, and you get 0 0.100. So, let's set this up. We get 0 0.376 equals x over 0 0.100. We can cross multiply, get those moles. Beautiful. x equals this value times 0 0.1. So we get 0 0.0376. And now that's the moles of the solute. And the solute we said was that salt, the alkali plus the fluoride salt. Hmm, I still want to find out that general formula. So that means I should know, you know, who is the, the metal. And if we would have known the molar mass, we can definitely find out who this is, right? Because I do know one element, I just don't know the other. So if I do know the total molar mass of the compound, I could subtract the fluorine to get the mass of the metal. So maybe I could find the molar mass. What does molar mass equal? Well, molar mass always equals a gram value divided by the moles. Hmm. So maybe that's why I had to find the moles. So let's, let's figure it out. Molar mass is the grams of the salt, which they told me was 4 grams, divided by the moles that we found out, 0 0.0376. Maybe I'll just get rid of the G. And let's find this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. Um, bring this up a little bit, just so that I could write down here, what, what is that molar mass? Molar mass equals... 4 divided by this number, I get 106. 106.29 grams per mole. So now, if we know that MF is the general formula, and we have a total molar mass of 106, I could take the 106.29 that's the whole molar mass of MF. And I know how much a fluorine is, right? And if I subtract these two values, the fluorine goes bye-bye, and you only have the mass of the, uh, the metal. So on a periodic table, fluorine weighs 19. So I'm just going to subtract these two. So we'll take this number, we'll subtract 19, and we're left over with 87.28. So we have now 87.2, well, I guess 2.9, right? Grams per mole left. And that's of the quote-unquote metal. Let's go on the periodic table to find out who is 87. Let's see. Periodic table out. I'm looking right at it. 87, pretty close. I do see one that's on for my periodic table is 85. So I would say that this is RB. So that's all we had to do, was just find out who that metal is. Who has roughly around 87? That's definitely RB. And um, they just asked for what is the formula of the salt. So I'll put it right smack in the middle here. We have one metal, one fluoride. We know that the, the metal now is RB. So it would be RBF. Box that answer off, and we are done. Okay, what'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love helping you guys out, and I hope you're having a great day.
keep studying hard and I will talk to you soon, okay? All right, take care. Bye-bye.